What do we do in ledgers? Well, ledgers is called ledgers because I was resisting calling it a journal or a sketchbook because I think it's more than that. And to be fair, my ledger isn't as well annotated as those in the class. Um, but on these pages, there should also be things like annotations and writing, and that's where the ledger comes in the keeping of records and process etc. Now I'm going to show you this book that I did with my last class but I'm obviously not going to go into any of the process, any of the methods or the techniques that we cover but just to give you a sense of what they're going to look like it's colour study, it's exploring pattern and shape, looking at stitch that goes with that looking at paint marks that goes with that, looking at surface treatments on pages that goes with that um, there's nothing here that's hugely, hugely challenging, I wouldn't say. There was a wide variety of work achieved in the last class, and there is a link here to look at work. Well, there's a link on the registration page to look at work from the last class, so you get a sense of the difference. Nobody came up with the same thing. Everybody's work was very uniquely different. This has got annotation on this page, and um, here. There's a strip there with annotation on concerning thread colours, etc., and techniques and process. So, you know, I have kept some records of that, um, but obviously I'm working on the next lesson while people are working on their ledgers, so I get behind the class, if you know what I mean, trying to be one step ahead in terms of making demonstrations for them. So, you know, we're looking at colour and pattern there as well. Here, simple shapes, just two torn pages. This piece of work should be stitched in here. I took it out for something. But there's annotation there with information um, pertaining to this page, okay? That's movable, but I need to stick that down. Um, looking at patterns from a source and ways of developing that within your page. And then this, this white page, I'm gonna take that out because it'll get spoiled. And I have loose things in mine, um, and that's a good thing, I think, to have loose things. You can take them out and examine them closely. Making full sheets and pieces of work from one source, and embellishing your page from one source, okay? So, you know, these are all the things that we covered, and this is my last page that I achieved. Um, so this is a massive spread. Over here, I've got a page under a page here. Then I've got another page here, and then I've got a fold-out page there that folds in. You know, so there's a lot of ways you can take your own personal ledger. And there's also a link to a, a tip about your sketchbook. These spiral-bound sketchbooks are the most useful, because you, you're going to have to work from the back of the page sometimes. And that's the only way to get the back of your page completely flat, is to be able to do that with it. Okay. So that's why I advise using a spiral bound sketchbook. So I just wanted to give you a sense of what we actually do on ledgers because it helps to see something that's been created within that format. So all this is my work that I created for ledgers. Okay. So as I say, there's a link on this post to the registration and more information. There's a page on this blog about ledgers. At the top it's called Online Learning. And you will find links in those places to work that the previous class did for this course. Okay, so that's just a brief overview for you of what actually happens on ledgers.